Welcome to Doing More, I'm Erica Cardenas and Happy New Year. As we reflect on our New Year resolutions, it's also a time to reflect and pay tribute to generations of African Americans for their sacrifice, triumphs, and contributions made throughout U.S. history during Black History Month. National Black History Month, celebrated in February, serves as both a celebration and a powerful reminder that black history is engraved in our American history. Black culture is American culture, and black stories are essential to the ongoing story of America, from our faults and struggles to our progress and aspirations. It's a time to commemorate and create awareness of the immeasurable contributions made by African Americans. And a great way to celebrate Black History Month is through the Shining Light Foundation, an organization who's bringing people and communities together through awareness, education, and the arts. So today throughout the show, we'll be highlighting various murals in Phoenix under the organization's Black History Mural Project. Take a look. The Shining Light Foundation was formed in 2001. We're 501c3, a nonprofit, and this nonprofit was established to bring resources to marginalized communities. The Shining Light Foundation has two programs, which is uh, the Black History Mural Project, which you could see the Martin Luther King, the interactive Martin Luther King mural. And the second one is a Day of Kindness, where we just go out into the communities and provide them with resources. This past December, we planted 65 trees and we cleaned up three blocks. Mostly, I do a lot of community advocacy. I go into the neighborhoods and see things that they may need or they may want and they can't get because they don't have the resources or the know-how. And I provide that with them by collaborating with other organizations that may have the means. The Black History Mural Project was birthed out of the Black Lives Matter movement. We wanted to bring the Black Lives Matter street mural down here to Phoenix. And so we decided instead of painting one mural, we're going to paint 28. Because it's Black History Month, let's paint a mural for every day in Black History Month and teach about Black history. And we're going to put our history in every single wall downtown Phoenix. We wanted to highlight black figures that made significant contributions to society that don't really get that recognition. Like one of the murals you'll see is the Wendell Scott mural. You know, he's a former NASCAR driver. A lot of people don't know about him, right? And won so many races and he had to put up with so many things. And I think his story that stands out is how he persevered when he faced adversity. Another mural you'll see is Dr. Sion Proctor, first African-American female to shuttle to space. Some notable Afro-Latinos like Rosie Perez and Roberto Clemente, my favorite Celia Cruz. One thing about the murals is they add value. So we receive feedback from kids, you know, because they're seeing engineers and inventors and doctors. So this is giving them the sense and the urgency that, well, if these people did it in a time where they weren't welcome to do it or they faced extreme adversity, then I could do it in my time. We painted murals in Atlanta, California, and Texas. We teamed up with school districts we had children write essays on each of the individual figures. Words of inspiration that I would give a child is one piece at a time. When you look at the bigger picture, it looks overwhelming. But when you break it down into small pieces, it's not that bad. It may take some time to get it done, but as long as you keep going on it and you're staying determined and you're motivated to continue doing it, it'll happen. Shining Light Foundation stands out through community activism, community engagement, servant leadership, and advocacy. They want to build a platform where marginalized communities can access an abundance of resources. For more information, go to shining-light.org. What a great way of educating and enlightening our communities. I'll be back with more and doing more right after this. Welcome back to Doing More. We're celebrating Black History Month through the Shining Light Foundation's Black History Mural Project. As you can see behind me is a 3D mural of the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 
The Shining Light Foundation Black History Mural Project originally involved the paintings of 28 murals representing the 28 days of February's Black History Month. The beautiful artistic murals highlight black figures who have made breakthroughs and differences in a variety of fields, industries, and categories with the goal of painting 365 murals and 1,095 black figures nationwide, which as of now, you can find murals in Arizona, Texas, California, and Atlanta, Georgia. We headed to Las Vegas where Cox honored eight Southern Nevadans who have a long history of making a difference in their community. My parents were recruited through the Bureau of Indian Affairs to teach on a Navajo reservation in a place called Goulden's, Utah. And so that's where I was born. I did not expect to come to Las Vegas. I thought that I would be here for 90 days and then I would go back um, to the East Coast. I'm an East Coast kid, that's all I know. I came here from South Florida. I was the director for the Broward County Libraries in the Fort Lauderdale area. And then in 1964, opportunities became available for them to apply for positions here with the Clark County School District, so we came here in 1964. Some point thought I was gonna to go to the Marines, which I signed up for, I was gonna be a police officer, I thought I was gonna to go to law school, I thought I was gonna do hair, hence all the hairstyles I do from time to time. But at the end of the day, I, I fell in love with college and I never left. My parents were both educators. Yeah, they did probably 70 years combined between the two of them. So I got into this field by accident. I was in the Army, serving as an Army officer, and I was leaving active duty service. I was a music teacher for 20 years and then an administrator for the last part of my career. And I transitioned to a book distribution company. I got my first opportunity in construction. Uh, we were overseeing the rebuild for Montgomery County, Maryland, also for Washington, D.C., and for Arlington, Virginia. I just fell in love with the construction side of it. I love serving the public, and it, nothing gives me greater joy just to make sure that my constituents are safe in their neighborhoods and that they are happy and that I'm doing the best that I can for the city that I am so proud to call home. Uh, the best part of my job by far is the people. Uh, just getting the opportunity to work alongside uh, some great individuals, uh, that's been the most rewarding and most fulfilling part of my job. That's why I see myself in community with our, my peer institutions because we frame, we're anchors to this community. I'm um, just like the, 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 the corner store or the library in the community where I grew up. All of us are essential to the health and wealth of the community. What better way for the community to connect with me than for me to be in the community, which then provides me the ideas and inspiration to develop programs and services to support the community. It's not where you stand in the midst of a moment or a situation. It's how I think you prepare other people to rise and shine even when you're not in the room with them. I love identifying individuals who may be stuck in their careers or stuck in life and finding out what place or what role I can play in getting them unstuck. With the significance of being the first African-American mayor in the state of Nevada, my goal is to not only lead the city, but lead it with the best of my abilities so those that are looking up to me can say, you know what, if she can do it, I can too. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams that I get to sit in this space hmm, and do this work. It's profound. Cox is a company that values inclusion and diversity in the workforce with hopes of building awareness cultivating communities and committed in celebrating contributions to cultures, community, and customers. Cox Communications and its volunteers are committed in honoring our fellow military veterans through its Wreaths Across America initiative. Take a look. Today's event is so special just because our veterans do so much just in, for our nation and be able to protect our freedoms. And it's just amazing that we can pay respect and be able to lay these reefs down. Um, and people from all walks of life come in here, veteran, non-veteran, just everyone here together in reverence for our veterans and paying respect and laying these reefs down. It's just a memorable event. We're gonna uh, gather reefs and just lay them at all the stones of the veterans. And that's just very special because as me, you, children, and just everyone together laying these down. 
It's just showing that respect and just reverence for people that paid a price for this country and laying it down. It's just, it's a meaning, it's a very humbling, humbling experience. If you've never done it, I would ask anyone to uh, try it because it's an amazing, humbling experience. I think it's really cool that Cox and especially the Southwest region stepping up and buying all these wreaths and folks get here early and unload all these wreaths from all these trucks. It's a whole lot of work and we have Cox volunteers out here in the cold, gloves, jackets on and just unload loading things. It's just a great experience and totally thankful for Cox and the Southwest region for stepping up. The Reese across America is no stranger to just one state. It's across all our states and in the Southwest region we get to have multiple locations doing this which is very special because it shows Cox commitment to volunteering but also our commitment to veterans and, and showing respect. This event is really special to, for me because being a veteran myself um, and doing a combat deployment back in 2013 to Afghanistan, you know, I've lost friends so this is very uh, special to me. I've worked for various employers in my life and by far Cox is the best one. Their their culture and values and, and their commitment to volunteering is just second to none. I love that uh, they have a volunteer program where you're actually paid and you can take time off to come do this um, and that just means a lot you know it just shows the company that they're all about the community and helping out and being able to come out here today with my employees and lay down reefs that's just something special and and I love uh, Cox Communications for being able to do that for their employees. It's very special that we get to bring our families because you have you know your children who may not be exposed or have been to a cemetery like this before and for for kids to be able to come out here and lay wreaths down, it just gives them a great understanding of what's going on and being able to do it with a huge community here of veterans, non-veterans, and everyone coming together and showing respect and reverence to those veterans. It's awesome. It's, it's a great family experience. Today's ceremony, there's drawing a lot of people here. They love their veterans here, and we're going to get anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 people here today, which is just awesome to see how many people coming out and supporting this event. It's really cold out here. And to see this many people coming out, it's just amazing to see that commitment to come out here to our veterans. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Doing More, where we shine a light on the good things happening in our communities. I'm Erica Cardenas. We're celebrating Black History Month as part of the Shining Light Foundation's Black History Mural Project. Black History Month originates from the work of Dr. Carter G. Woodson, founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. As first National Negro History Week, then by the 1960s, the week had grown into a month-long celebration. President Gerald Ford officially recognized Black History Month for the first time in 1976, and every year since, American presidents have designated each February as Black History Month. We visited the Salvation Army as Cox volunteers shared some holiday cheer with children. Take a look. We believe that every kid deserves a Christmas, every kid deserves a toy, and several kids we know in the Valley don't get toys. And so this program makes sure through the Angel program, through the mall, through the corporate partners like Cox, we make sure that every kid receives a toy at Christmas that wants one. For decades now, Cox in Arizona has been contributing to the hundreds of of nonprofits and charitable organizations in this community. Salvation Army relationship began over 20 years ago through Cox Charity employee giving grant campaigns as well as volunteering at these type of programs and all summer long as well as supporting me on the board which is huge for the support of this community and the support of this organization. So I chose to be a Salvation Army board member because it aligns with my personal values. It also aligns with the mission at Cox that we want to serve the communities that we work and live in every day. We know that there's thousands of kids, actually tens of thousands of kids right here in the valley that don't get toys every year. And so the mission of this community of Cox is to make sure that's fulfilled. Today and every day this month, we've been doing toy distribution for the Salvation Army. Cox employees all around the valley collected toys in all of the area service centers and all of the Cox facilities and centralized those and a couple dozen employees brought them here today where we're actually doing distribution for over a thousand families this evening. The Salvation Army mission for the holidays is not just to provide gifts for the kids so that they'll have something under their tree Christmas morning, but it's also to help make sure that they have their lights on at night to make sure that they have heat and we're helping to provide utilities and rental assistance and food to make sure they have something to eat on Christmas. So to really serve the person as the whole needs that they have. The relationship between the Salvation Army and Cox Communications 
is so important because Cox Communications supports the Salvation Army all throughout the whole year. When I see these gifts for just talking about today here, what they're doing right now, how many trucks have come in with gifts, brand new toys for kids that they don't even know. That warms my heart to know that the employees and staff and, and those at Cox Communications care about our, our kids in the community, no matter what their name is, how old they are, what their situations are. They just want to give gifts to the whosoever. And, and that's very touching because it shows that we have a community that cares and Cox Community cares. This experience has come full circle for me. I was once an angel recipient as a child, and I'm so proud to work for a company that is able to give back to the same organization that helped me and my family as a child. And this is what it's all about for me, um, just being able to work for a company that is aligned with the same core values and beliefs that are instilled in me. We at the Salvation Army want to give a, a huge thank you to Cox Communications for over 20 years of support to not just us, but to our community. Take a look how Cox Communications and Computer to Kids provided free computers and affordable internet to Alhambra School District families. Today we're giving away free devices to 30 families with the Alhambra School District. We're also enrolling them in Cox's affordable internet programs and providing them with free digital literacy skills. We're equipping these families with all the resources they need to thrive in today's digital world. We're having this wonderful partnership event with Cox Communication and Computer to Kids, which is just donating computers to our families and also some free or low cost internet. So important for the Alhambra School District and for our elementary school district here in this community that would provide a venue for education, internet, research, any type of communication to stay connected with families and students. Our mission is to make sure that anyone in need of technology has access to it no matter what their annual income is. So as long as they own these computers, they have access to our tech support for free. They have the headsets with headphones. They come with Windows 10 and Microsoft Office Suite already loaded onto them. They have all sorts of different learning tools on them. It's called Power My Learning. So it is every grade level with every subject and they are games. So if you have a student that's not doing so great in math, you can have them play some games, hopefully strengthen their skills. They're fun. I even play them every once in a while. Muchas gracias a Cox Communication for esta ayuda que nos proporcionó aquí en la escuela a Andalucía y pues gracias también a todos los que conmemoran todo este equipo y muchas gracias. Thank you Cox, Computer to Kids, Alhambra School District for this awesome computer. For Cox, we're committed to bridging the digital divide. We offer a variety of different affordable internet options for families to ensure they have options to get connected. Through our Connect to Compete and Connect Assist program, we provide low-cost internet to qualifying families. And we're also partnering with the FCC's Affordable Connectivity program to provide a $30 internet subsidy. So now, customers who are enrolled in Connect to Compete or Connect Assist can receive free internet once their ACP $30 credit is applied to their bill. Alhambra District is a wonderful district in our neighborhood here, the community of Maryville is a district of caring and loving students and families and staying connected. Cox will definitely help me with, you know, providing internet for us and my family. Thank you, Cox, Computer 2 Kids, and Alhambra School District for this amazing laptop. We kind of complement each other. Where Cox brings the internet, we bring the technology. We want to make sure that we're providing support to all families, regardless of their economic or income status. So we want to make sure we're here to provide support to all communities, and we're happy to do this today with Alhambra School District. We'll be back with more on Doing More right after this. Welcome back to Doing More. We're celebrating Black History Month through Shining Light Foundation's Black History Mural Project. Our final stop was at Big Brothers Big Sisters, an organization mentoring and creating lasting relationships one youth at a time. People know who we are, people know our name, but I don't know if sometimes they really know what we do. My name is Laura Capello and I'm the president and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Central Arizona. We are the largest youth mentoring organization in the country and locally in Arizona we serve about 1,600 kids 
And these 1,600 kids are matched with a mentor. In the 10 years I've been CEO, we've always had a waiting list. I mean, there's always a need, especially in the West Valley and especially for boys. And the pandemic made that even tougher to find volunteers. I think mentors are important to everybody, but especially kids, and especially a lot of the kids that we serve. A lot of them are being raised in single parent family homes, overworked mom, or maybe multiple siblings. And I just think that having that one-to-one -one time, especially, and that's why I think it's so important when we get men to sign up, because a lot of the single parent family homes are head up by a mom. So a lot of those kids, boys don't have good male role model. So I think that is why, you know, we have so many boys waiting. Kids are struggling right now. And if a child doesn't have somebody to go to other than a parent, they'll keep things inside. And I think sometimes it's just having a trusted adult that you feel like you can vent to, ask questions. Our program specialists do a really good job of making sure that the friendships they're putting together are going to be long lasting and beneficial to both the big and the little. What we hear from our volunteers a lot is they say, you know, I got into this to make a difference. I didn't realize how much of a difference it would make in my life. And we hear that over and over again. The relationship with my little has affected me very positively in ways that I didn't even anticipate. He's teaching me things just like I'm teaching him things and we have a terrific relationship. It's still growing since it's just six months old, but we're having a good time together. It really doesn't take any sort of special degree or expertise to be a big. All it takes is a commitment of your time and a willingness to you know, spend some quality time with a child that needs your guidance. I have noticed changes in Drennan uh, in the six months that I've been with him. You know, he's starting to uh, come out of his shell a little bit more. He's starting to become a little bit more outgoing. You know, he, he, we're, we're enjoying our, our time together. You know, the first couple of meetings, it was really just getting to know each other, to developing kind of a line of communication and rapport with each other. And now we're able to just enjoy each other's company a little bit more in whatever type of activity that we're doing. If you want to learn more how to become a big brother or big sisters, please, please look at our website. There's lots of great information on there. And please, men, we really need you and our boys need you. There's 200 boys waiting still for a big brother. So we look forward to hearing from all of you. I want to thank the Shining Light Foundation for celebrating Black History Month with us and for sharing their beautiful artwork that educates, inspires, empowers, and most importantly reminds us that all black history matters. Black History Month is about celebrating the stories of countless men and women of color who've made a difference in our world. Some achievements are noted more than others, but all their stories reveal how they've changed the world and how we can too. Let's encourage each other to learn more about one another, learn to respect our differences, and value every voice. I'm Erica Cardenas, thanks so much for joining me.